Today is Sri Vyasa Purnima or Guru Purnima. It is the day on which traditionally Gurus are worshipped, but within our tradition we do it on the specific day of the uh, appearance of the spiritual master. The Asadeep is glorified by Sri Shankara Acharya in the following words. The most to take the Asa Vishala Buddha, Palara Vindayata, Patra Netra, Yena Twaya Bharata Taila Purna, Prajvalita Jnana Maya Kadivaha. Srila Prabhupada translated this as follows Salutations to thee, O Vyas. Though thou art of mighty intellect, and thine eyes are large as the petals of the full-blown lotus. It was thou who brightened this lamp of wisdom, filling it with the oil of the Mahabharata. So, uh, Srila Vyasadeva is the uh, original spiritual master for those following the Vedic path. He is known as Veda Vyas. Vyasa means one who divides. Vyasa divided the Veda. The Veda is one. One, the one, it's one literature, one body of literature. But it is uh, esoteric and not easy to understand, particularly for people in Kali Yuga. So, uh, at the end of every Dwarapa Yoga, one person takes the role of Vyas. You can say that, largely, about the Yuji, you know, when you might and uh, simplify or organizes the Vedas in such a way that they may be understandable for the people of Kali Yoga. In the, the Veda Vyas for this Kali Yoga, his specific name is Krishna Vipayana. His name is Krishna because he's very black featured. Krishna means black. And Vipayana means who is born on a Dvipa, or Dvipa means an island. Uh, what happened, there was the, the daughter of a fisherman was engaged in ferrying passengers over the river. Uh, her father, the Vasu, had engaged her as, to do this as a pious activity to help others. So, uh, Harashara, the great devotee of Vishnu, the compiler of the Vishnu Purana. He was once crossing the river with Satyavati ferrying him. When he noted that at this place, at this time, it's extremely auspicious if a child was to be sired. So he proposed to the fisher girl whose name was Matsyaganda. She smelled fishy. Siganda means smells like a fish. So he said to her that uh, we should beget a child. It's, a, it's a, an extraordinarily auspicious time. She protested. She protested. She protested and said, well, how can that be? I'm an unmarried girl. He and Parashara said, ordinarily that would be true, but in this circumstance, uh, the child should be silent. There is no question of him acting in a manner which is not proper. We shouldn't think that Parashu was overcome by lust and therefore he made this proposal. If he had been overcome by lust, he certainly wouldn't have given birth to a child like Vyas. 
so the uh, Parashra by his mystic potency created a, a mist so that they could not be seen and on an island uh, in the middle of the river immediately after their uniting in, just like in the manner of the demigods which uh, without waiting for pregnancy the child was delivered that child was Vyas that uh, the fishy smell by the mercy of Parashara that was changed to a, a beautiful smell and that smell later attracted Maharaj Shantanu who was uh, the father of Bhishma but his first wife was Ganga and uh, he also married Satyavati. It's a long story. Mahabharata stories are quite complex. So Vyasa is uh, the incarnation of Bhagavan. Uh, there's some controversy over whether he is a Shatya Vesha avatar or a full avatar. But for our purposes, it doesn't really matter. So uh, he divided the Veda. The Veda means there are many, 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 many verses. Now, uh, Vishwanath, I believe it's Vishwanath Chagar Thakur. He gives the example of a man who has a huge stock of jewels, rubies, diamonds, emeralds, and sapphires, and sapphires, emeralds and sapphires. That's uh, red, white, green, and uh, blue. So, uh, but they're all mixed up. So someone who comes and sorts them out and puts them in separate containers, that's the, something like the job that Vyasa did. Okay. So like that, uh, Vyasa, he, uh, what had happened, the, the mantras, they all become mixed up so no one knew which order they went in, how they were supposed to be recited. It was a bit of a mess. Not that no one knew, but it was, it was messed up. So Vyas uh, sorted out the mantras into the Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Sama Veda, and the Tarva Veda. And he taught these four Vedas to four disciples, to Paila, the Rig Veda, to Vaishampaina, the Yajur Veda, to Jaimini, the Sama Veda, and to Suman, to the Atarva Veda. Now, uh, prior to this, the Vedic knowledge had been passed down uh, by oral tradition, as Vyasadeva was the first to uh, write down, write it down. That means he did the, the Puranas, Mahabharata, these he wrote down. Um, because in previous ages people were more intelligent, they would learn by hearing, and in modern age, even though it's written down, people have a hard time to remember or learn anything. But writing is a help. So apart from compiling the Vedas and overseeing the editing of uh, many of the Vedas of the Puranas, Vyasadeva also composed two books of his own. One is the Vedanta Sutra, which is uh, an explanation and a harmonization of the uh, message of the Vedas, specifically the Upanishads. And the other book, uh, which Vyasa gave in his own writing, is Mahabharata, which in itself is a huge work. It's, it's the longest, the biggest known book in the world. So he was a uh, highly uh, prodigious, right? he wrote many, so, so much intellectual work he did. And the Srimad Bhagavatam, he also gave it to us in the present form. 
Kalutama Shloka Charitam Chakara Bhagavan Rishi. Chakara means that he, he made it. I mean, Srimad Bhagavatam is eternal, but the present form that we have it in is given by Krishna Prabhupada Pana Vyas. And Bhagavatam Vyas himself describes how uh, he was feeling despondent despite having compiled all the Vedic literature. And Narada, his guru, came to him and, and said that, uh, told him that the reason you are feeling despondent is because you've compiled all the Vedic literature but you haven't directly yep. described Krishna and devotional service to Krishna. So taking inspiration from Narada, uh, Vyasa at that point compiled the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the, uh, yeah, he compiled the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is Sarva Vedeti Hasanam Saram Saramudahritam, the extracted essence of the essence of all the Vedas and the histories and all, all the Vedic literature. Nigamakalpa Tara Ganitam Halam. It is the ripened fruit of the desire, the wish fulfilling tree that is the Vedas. So Vyas is uh, clearly not an ordinary person. In the Bhagavad Gita, in mentioning, uh, in, in describing some of the uh, some of the ways in which Krishna can be recognized in this world. In, in which Krishna mentions what, whatever is great in any class is a representation of him. Krishna says, Muninam uh, Muninam uh, Vyasaham. Muninam Aham Vyasa. Sorry. Among the Munis, I am Vyasa. Among the great thinkers, we could say. Among the way. It's a bit difficult to Sage. Sage is the word in English, right? They usually translate it as sage. Then also uh, Arjuna, when he uh, establishes Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he quotes several of the great authorities who substantiate that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Who knows that verse? Ah, yeah. Well, it's two verses together. They go together. Param Brahma Param Dhamma Pavitram Paramam Bhavan Purusham Shashvatam Devyam Adi Devim Ajam Vibhum Arjuna says to Krishna, You are the supreme reality. Please turn off your cell phone. I'll take it outside to the windows. Maybe <laughs> you are the uh, supreme Dhamma. How do we gloss Dhamma? Just, uh, you are the supreme abode. This is, this is, this is, this is, yeah. Shelter. You are the supreme pure. Krishna, uh, Arjuna says to Krishna. Mm. Uh, you are the eternal, transcendental person, the original God, what? unborn, powerful. Then, Ahastram Rishaya Sarve. All the Rishis say this about you. All the great sages say this about you. Then uh, he mentions the... Uh, Devala, Asita, Vyas, Narada, they all, all great sages, they all uh, recognize that Krishna is this supreme person. Mm. Vyasa describes himself in Mahabharata, his birth, uh, he has no qualms in describing this uh, hesitation or, or qualms means hesitation due to 
fear or embarrassment like that. Mm. Although uh, birth from an unmarried woman is generally considered shameful, it's not shameful. In Vyasa's case, it's glorious. It's, uh, the moment it's occurred. He, then uh, he describes about his activities also. Uh, so much literary work, you think that's all he was doing. He did so much literary work, you might think that's all that he was doing. He was uh, living in the cave at Badrinath, in the Himalayas. You can still visit that place. That's called that cave is called Vyasa Gupa or the cave of Vyas. And actually, Vyasa's activities are still going on. He's still alive in the world today. He's still up there, Babina, somewhere up there. He never died. He's one of the seven Chiranjivis, or a person who just goes on living in yeah. this world. Uh, so, of course, if we go there, we, we probably won't see him except in his deity form. But those who are highly qualified, they can directly uh, interact, intercourse with Vyas. One such person was Madhvachari, our Guru. If you see the, uh, our Parampara listed in the beginning of Bhagavad Gita as it is, you will see the first is Krishna, then Brahma, then Narada, then Vyasa, and then Madhva. You may think, well, Vyasa was at the time of Krishna, which is about 5,000 years ago, and Madhva was less than a thousand years ago. So, how is that possible? But Madhva went to Badrinath to meet Vyas. Madhva compiled an original commentary on Vedanta Sutra. And who is there to uh, comment or comment on it? There's no one more qualified than Madhva. Yeah. So he went to have it uh, checked and approved and blessed by Vyasadev himself. So he walked from Udupi, deep south of India, to Padrinath in the far north, and met Vyasadev. It's also said that Shankaracharya met uh, Vyasadev. So actually, uh, Madhva met Vyas twice. He walked up there twice. So Mazda, uh, sorry, Vyas lived in the Himalayas. But he told his he, his mother Satyavati, if you ever need me, just call me. So after uh, her two sons died, Satyavati, her two sons, Chitrangada and Vichitravira, they both died. Uh, they were wondering how to continue the dynasty, the, the royal dynasty. Yeah. And Bhishma was the staunchest brahmachari in the history of the world. Yeah. He even fought with his guru when his guru told him to get married. Fought means, you know, <laughs> weapons, bows and arrows and everything. So when, uh, not recommended in general. <laughs> So then, then Bhishma, yeah, anyway, then Satyavati called Vyasa. And uh, <coughs> Vyasa, he was, uh, he was uh, an ascetic. So he went to the first widowed queen. Actually, the first was Amba, but she already, anyway, it's a long time. Anyway, he went to Ambika and she was, she was painted when she, when she saw him and smelled him. He was so ugly and black and smelly. Yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah I didn't explain that. Uh, yeah, he, they, she invited him to uh, beget sons in the womb of Ambika and Am Ambalika. Yeah, so when Ambika saw him, she was 
prey. It's, 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 it's ugly, fierce. No. We often think of sadhus as very peaceful and gentle, but actually those who do austerity, they, they become like fire, they can become very strong, They're like very really powerful, even their glands can be very strong. So, uh, Ambika closed her eyes when she was visited by Vyas, and Vyas afterwards said, he told uh, Satyavati that because she closed her eyes, when she uh, lay with me, therefore her son will be born blind. That son was Dhritarashtra. Then uh, Vyas went to the third wife, the first wife had already gone up. Well, she didn't marry, that was the point. The first sister. So the third sister, the second wife, Ambalika, uh, Vyasa next visited her for the sake of begetting a child. And uh, she had a similar reaction, and she, she, she kept her eyes open because she didn't want to have a blind son, but she turned completely pale in fright. And Vyas therefore afterward told Satyavati that because she went pale, her son will be pale, and his name will be Pandu, which means pale. And after the first son, Vritarashtra, was born, after some time, Satyavati again called, because she'd already had two sons and they died, so she thought she'd better have another one, just to make sure. So they again called the ass, and he was uh, went again to the chamber of Ambika. Oh. And uh, Ambika couldn't, she didn't want to go, so she sent a maidservant instead. He thought she'd uh, fool the ass. So the maidservant uh, received the ass very nicely and worshipped him and uh, we got a child with him. And Vyasa, of course, he wasn't fooled, but he told Satyavati that this child will be uh, greatly learned, a great, uh, very high character, and that was Vidura. So this way, Vyasa, he was mostly involved in literary activities, but uh, when necessary, he would also get involved in the affairs of human society. He was the chief priest at the uh, Rajasuya sacrifice of Yudhishthira Maharaj and also uh, later at the Ashvamedha Yajna of Yudhishthira Maharaj. So uh, in our Gorya Sampradaya we uh, particularly worship him for his contribution of Srimad Bhagavatam. Which uh, he taught to various disciples. The most, uh, the most, the best disciple was his son Shukadev. Uh, what Vyasadev gave, Shukadev made it even sweeter. So, uh, in this way, the uh, Guru Parampara comes from all the. All the bona fide Vedic Paramparas, they all recognize Vyasa as their guru. Yeah, so uh, the position of the uh, guru in Vedic culture is uh, it's very difficult for people not raised in that culture to understand that. Okay. It's very difficult for people not raised in Vedic culture to understand the position of the guru. And even in the modern India, it's uh, there's so many cheap cheaters who uh, represent themselves as gurus, but they're not representatives of the us. Srila Prabhupada uh, has written several uh, several times about the us. Uh, in one letter, he wrote as follows: uh, in in uh, Refutation of the uh, contention that there was no actual person called Vyasa, it's just some mythology, Srila Prabhupada wrote. 
Vyasadeva was a real person accepted by all authorities. And anyone can judge how wonderful he was to compile the Vedic literatures. He is therefore known as Mahamuni. Muni means thoughtful, or great thinker, or great poet. And Maha means still greater. So there is no comparison with Vyasadeva, with any writer, or thinker, or philosopher. <coughs> Nobody can estimate the scholarly importance of Srila Vyasadeva. He composed many millions of Sanskrit verses. And we are just trying to receive a fragmental knowledge out of them by our tiny efforts only. Srila Vyasadeva therefore summarized the whole Vedic knowledge in the shape of Srimad Bhagavatam which is known as the ripened fruit of the desire tree known as Vedic knowledge. The ripened fruit is received hand to hand through disciplic succession. And anyone who does this work in disciplic succession from Srila Vyasadi is considered a representative of Vyasadi. And as such, the bona fide spiritual master's appearance day is worshipped as Vyasa not only that, the exalted seat on which the spiritual master sits is also called Vyasasana. The Srila Prabhupada is the uh, extraordinary representative of Srila Vyasadeva, who summarized all the essence of all the Vedic knowledge in his books, of which uh, Srila Bhagavatam is Srila Prabhupada's uh, main contribution for the re spiritualization of the world. And all those Grihastas who do not have a set of Srila Bhagavatam in their home should definitely have one. And today is the most auspicious day to get a set of Srila Bhagavatam. You'll get the special blessings of Srila Vyasadeva and Madhvacharya and all the Acharyas in Parampara, and especially Srila Prabhupada. And if you want my castor tree blessings, I won't explain that again. Uh, I can sign it for you also. If you want my blessings, I will sign your book, Srimad Bhagavatam. Full set. Yeah. I'll sign one book. Because I, I know for sure that your life will be auspicious. Dishraya Saya. It is the, uh, in Bhagavatam it said that it's, it is all auspicious. So, uh, Grihastas, uh, anyone, don't leave here without your set of Srimad Bhagavatam. Or if you have a set of Srimad Bhagavatam, well, there are many other books of Srila Prabhupada, so make sure you have all of the books. And if you have all of Prabhupada's books, well, I'm also writing books. Prabhupada told me to write books. You can take them also. And if you have all of those books, congratulations. Now take more books of Prabhupada and go out and distribute them and make others fortunate also. Srila Vyasadeva Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, everyone who takes a full set of books Ki Jai. Jai. Um, now, I, I'm going to see some, I'll continue the Darshan Marathon now, back at the uh, Kuti I'm staying in, Kuta Kuti. <laughs> Kuta Kuti. You know what Kuta means? Sanskritam? Shva is another word. Shva, Saramaya. There's lots of dogs in there. Um, those who are, I know many devotees are leaving tonight. So those who are, or, or early tomorrow morning, so those who are leaving, I'll see them. If you're staying tomorrow, meet me tomorrow. <laughs>